Plutarch describes a voyage to the great continent across the North Atlantic. Does astronomical and geographical information of Plutarch's de Fassi describe a trip beyond the North Atlantic? In Plutarch's book on the apparent face in the orb of the moon, the interlocutors develop a dialogue about a trip to the great continent, quote unquote, beyond the North Atlantic Ocean. Now we know we have DNA evidence of the Native American Indians around the Great Lakes region of Canada, the United States. They have DNA from ancient Crete, from the ancient Minoans. We also know that their the languages spoken by the chiefs of the tribes of the Native American Indians was ancient Greek, and the the alphabet that they used was ancient Greek. Now, beyond the North Atlantic is what Plutarch said, meaning, of course, North America. We also have recent evidence of beautiful uh, ancient Greek theaters in Peru, in China. And I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, North America does not have enough archaeological, archaeological digs to find out what's going on there. We have a lot of mythology and ancient history from the European continent stating that uh, there were uh, travels made to North America by the elite of the ancient world who set up new cities. And these are just a few of the uh, rainbow warriors of the uh, North American continent. So you'll see the Chinese ancient theater, the ancient Greek theater is in excellent condition and an upcoming uh, image of a Peru ancient Greek theater. So obviously, for these ancient Greek theaters to have been there, ancient Greeks were there, setting up their culture. So, by applying modern scientific data, the present reappraisal of the astronomical and geographical elements with its dialogue has produced a novel interpretation of the date and place of the meeting and the journey to the North Atlantic Ocean. A described solar eclipse is dated to AD 75, making use of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, MEUSE list, as well as historical information. The described peculiar recurrent trips take place every 30 years, when the planet Saturn reaches the Taurus constellation from the Mediterranean Sea to the Cronian Open Sea, which is identified with northern Atlantic Ocean coasts. It has been suggested that the last mission had returned homeland in April AD 56. The information provided concerns distances between coastal sites and islands, duration of sea paths in days, and the reported setting and size between the destination place and its gulf with regard to Azov in Crimea and the Caspian Seas, the Caspian Sea. Implications of the sea current and the coastal geomorphology of the lands are given following strictly the Gulf Stream current as well as other known sea currents in the Northern Atlantic Ocean and introduced estimates to speed for the ship. The geographical location of destination of the Greek settlers is proposed, purposely, uh, proposedly identified with the St. Lawrence Gulf, that is the St. Lawrence Seaway through Canada, through Quebec, Montreal, and down, of course, into the Great Lakes, and Newfoundland Island. Other unnamed islands mentioned in this dialogue are identified with Norway's islands, the Azores, Iceland, Greenland, and Baffin Islands. So obviously, they already had trade throughout Europe and um, all the way into Britain and Scandinavia, Scotland and Ireland. From there, they went to the Hebrides. Then they went to the... Um, uh, Iceland, and then from there, from uh, there, from there to uh, Greenland. From Greenland, there uh, off to um, nor uh, nor North America through Newfoundland, and into the Saint Lawrence Seaway, into the Great Lakes, and into uh, settling not only North America. We have the, of course, the beautiful uh, discovered cultural uh, constructions of the theaters. As we know, the theaters were used for not only pleasure, but it was also a way of treatment. 
you would have to go to a place where you have a retreat and you would have uh, confession, fasting, daily baths, uh, listening to music as you watched art, and then you would have to watch in the theater two plays. One would be a drama, a tragedy about everyday life and problems, and then a comedy after that, so you would laugh out about the same problems. So that was a, a the theater is a, was a way of getting to your soul, your spirit, and of course, uh, bringing out certain topics that were very serious for people's problems and also laughing at them. So uh, we had this type of culture, not only in Europe, but also in North America and also in China. So uh, this is, uh, it's been uh, shown that the journey is made with good knowledge of sea currents by using the bright stars and stellar configurations as astronomical nightscape markers that determine the exact orientation of the sailing towards the Iberian Peninsula, that is Spain, and back to the Eastern Mediterranean, making the current working hypothesis a plausible event. So, the, of course, they were using the currents to help them with their triremes. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support. I've uh, translated this for you from a Greek article. Thank you. So this is the Chinese uh, ancient Greek theater, as you can see, it's in excellent condition, excellent. And uh, the topography shows that it's almost like the Ep Epidaurus theater in that it's at the base of a hill. And uh, that uh, means that it uh, influences the acoustics of the theater. And uh, if you stand the at the top of the row, these the top seats of the theater, and someone is standing in the center of the stage there down there all the way down the bottom and whispers something you can hear it you can hear the whisper all the way to the top row of the theater and this is this one here is in excellent condition as you can see and then the upcoming one is the one in peru this here is a th the theater in peru discovered an ancient greek theater in peru very dry so they were all over the place creating their theaters. I wouldn't be surprised if we have such construction in North America as well. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.